Do you frequently yearn for a dystopian future filled with desolate landscapes, privacy invading technology and sadness? Lots and lots of sadness? Well, see a therapist. Or you can get your fill by tuning into Charlie Brooker's sci-fi anthology series, Black Mirror, a TV series based around technological what-ifs and the way in which society is moulded by them. As well as being one of the most well-written, thought-provoking pieces of sci-fi ever put to screen, it's also pretty nuts. The running theme being, how could new technology rule the way we live for the worse? True, some episodes of Black Mirror are a little more light-hearted than others. Heck, some of them even have happy endings, if you can call them that. But come on, we all know that morbid curiosity is almost impossible to resist, and that's where Black Mirror's charm really lies. Welcome back to The Binger, guys, and today we're going to be taking a look at the creepiest Black Mirror episodes ever, from marginally melancholic to spine-tinglingly terrifying. So, for this video, merely having a crazy storyline doesn't guarantee an episode will make the list. Instead, we're looking for those stories that made us question our very own existence. So, get yourself a cup of coffee, because this is gonna get weird. Losing a loved one is undoubtedly one of the worst things that can ever happen to any of us, and no matter what way we try to remember them, nothing is ever quite a match for the real thing. But what if there was a way to bring them back? Or at least a version of them, anyway? Be Right Back brings the world of social media to the forefront, suggesting that someone's online interactions could be used to form a detailed profile of someone's personality, to the point of someone being replicated and becoming indistinguishable from the real thing. So, after Martha loses her boyfriend Ash, her grief is aided by a virtual version of his personality in voice form, which she soon trades in for a synthetic body. But it doesn't take long for Martha to realise that the synthetic version of Ash is nowhere near the same as the original. It may look and sound like him, and even replicate his speech patterns, but there's certain nuances that aren't quite there. Although today's technology has become extremely advanced, Be Right Back shows us how carefully constructed the relationships we have with one another really are, and that series of numbers and lines of data aren't enough to recreate the people we love. It also makes you question the openness and invasive ways in which social media works. Could your online profile really be used to create a version of you? And if so, how true to the real thing would it be? And what about the version of yourself you put on social media is skewed to make you look more popular or successful? Sheesh, I need to sit down. Ah yes, Black Museum. It's tough to know where to start with this episode, which takes the form of an anthology within an anthology, giving us several Black Mirror stories for the price of one. After Nish stops by a roadside museum while she charges her car, hashtag the future is now, she enters into a house of horrors. The Black Museum is filled with strange artifacts, all centered on specific bits of technology that have, in some way or another, gone awry, and we're taken through their history by owner Rolo. From a doctor who can feel a patient's pain, to a mother whose consciousness is transferred into a teddy bear for their son, it's all a bit freaky. And even Nish and Rolo have their own overarching storyline, which delivers its own grim high. Each story throughout the episode is drastically different, but the continuous theme of human life and its fragility is clear. If we have technology that can extend or better human life, how far do we push it until it becomes something unnatural and potentially disastrous? For those of you who like your depressing doses of technophobia short and sweet, then Black Museum is the mother load. Our first and certainly not our last video game based entry on today's list takes Star Trek to new terrifying frontiers. Online immersive gaming can serve as a lifestyle choice for some people, with virtual worlds acting as a safe haven for many of us who wish we had different lives. And that's the crux of USS Callister. Fed up with the lack of recognition he's getting at work, gifted programmer Robert creates a virtual home for himself where he can live out his greatest fantasy, which just so happens to be a Star Trek-like world where he is the captain of his own ship. Oh, and here's the clincher. His crewmates are virtual clones of his workmates, thanks to a few DNA samples he nabbed. In his fantasy world, he is the boss, free to humiliate them to his heart's content, until one of his new prisoners, sorry, crew members, turns on him. Of course, creating a human clone carries its own questions of morality. And even though the clones in the episodes exist in a virtual world, they are very much real people. USS Callister asks us whether living a false life via virtual reality is both A, healthy, and B, morally sound. If you entrap people, that is. It also poses the question of what could happen if sophisticated technology got into the wrong hands, perhaps those with a vindictive agenda. Know of any tech-savvy workmates who like to game but don't like you? I'd try and make nice if I was you, as soon as possible. 
Saying that taking a human life is one of the most serious things a person can do is a total understatement. But unfortunately, people taking each other's lives during wartime, for example, has happened countless times throughout history. But what if soldiers on a battlefield could become void of emotion, grief, or regret when conquering an enemy? And we're not talking about a robot here, we're talking about a human, someone who will take orders and never question their morals. Men Against Fire sees soldiers implanted with something called mass, which utilizes augmented reality to make human targets look like mutated creatures called roaches. The purpose is to ultimately dehumanize human targets and make way for a more efficient soldier. During the episode, one soldier's implant becomes faulty and he realizes the truth, resulting in a flood of morality-questioning emotions. As an audience, we experience the guilt with him, as we draw parallels between the fictitious world Charlie Brooker presents to us and the very real world of war today. Aside to the tech side of things, brainwashing soldiers into feeling unfounded animosity towards potential targets does happen. It has happened for years. Black Mirror makes us realize how catastrophic such a lack of human empathy would mean for society. Long gone are the days where video games were exclusively a sit-on-the-sofa experience. Nowadays, game developers are constantly looking for new ways to make video games more immersive and, well, real. But how far is too far, and is a super-realistic virtual world good for our mental health? Playtest sees a down-on-his-luck Cooper offered a job opportunity to test a video game. Dream job, right? The game is a virtual reality augmented affair that, at first, seems like the ultimate fluid gaming experience. After being given a small implant, he's good to go, and his assignment is very simple. See how long he can last inside a house without losing his marbles. But with the game's programming honing in on his worst fears, it's only a matter of time before Cooper finds himself in a living hell. Incapable of distinguishing what's real from what's fake, Cooper is soon battling his own imagination, and there is no escape. As consumers of media and technology, we are always wanting to push things further and further, but Playtest begs the question, is it really worth giving up free will for a few minutes of entertainment? Most would say no, but for those of you who are on the fence, watch Playtest and get back to us. Now more than ever, we are paranoid about our privacy, particularly when it comes to tech. Who can see my online activity? Who knows when I'm home? And can someone really hack my webcam? That latter question is what Shut Up and Dance is all about. After young Kenny attempts to fix his laptop by downloading an anti-malware program, he unknowingly has his laptop hacked, specifically his webcam. And after the webcam catches footage of him doing something revealing, he soon finds himself jumping through hoops as he's blackmailed with the threat of the footage being released. Terrified that people will see the footage, Kenny goes from average 19-year-old to bank robber in the blink of an eye, all in an attempt to maintain his privacy. Playing on one of the most popular fears of personal privacy in the home, Shut Up and Dance is one of the most realistic episodes in the entire series. The tech involved already exists. Blackmailing via hacked webcams has actually happened. Not only is the episode nerve-wracking to watch, but it constantly has us thinking about our own privacy. Am I really safe? Is my family safe? Would I even know if I was being watched? Ever felt like social media is against you? Well, you don't know the half of it. In this episode, the insidious technology spawns from something rooted in maintaining a sustainable ecosystem. Doesn't sound so scary, does it? Well, after robotic bees are created to thwart the falling bee population in the UK, it doesn't take long for things to go south. After a computer hacker finds a way to control said robotic bees, we soon see the birth of a nasty social media game called The Game of Consequences. And it's pretty simple. Choose who you think is public enemy number one, put a hashtag next to their name, and then watch anarchy unfold. If your name is hashtag the most, then you end up the target of the buzzing pests. And it ain't a pretty sight. They find a way into your head, up your nose, in your mouth, in your ears, and then they... yeah. There's a number of reasons this episode is so terrifying. Not only is the idea of mini-machines flying around with the capability of getting into our bodies chilling, but it brings to light the power of social media and the way in which society is desensitized to the very real consequences of online abuse. Whenever there is a social trend, no matter who it may affect, we seem to grab our phones and tweet, message, and gossip away. Hated in the Nation reminds us that these types of actions can have a significant effect on real people. 
A post-apocalyptic world has been imagined countless times. It usually goes something like, remote groups of people battle with other people over food and supplies. And we get to learn more about these characters and their past as the story goes on and blah blah blah. But that's where Metalhead is different. We're not told much at all. All we know is that society is broken down and what's left are humans and evil robotic dogs. The episode plays into our basic survival fears, being hunted by something that just doesn't give up. These robotic dogs are almost unstoppable, capable of hunting anyone down and disposing of them void of emotion and even a face. Set against a black and white landscape, Metalhead is tense from start to finish, and the dogs in question are agonizingly relentless, trotting along almost elegantly before delivering catastrophic blows. The episode's charm lies in its simplicity. As an audience, we fill in the blanks. We know the usual setup, it's clear some sort of technology has gotten out of hand and turned on the human race, leaving us with a never-ending fight for survival. It's technophobia in its rawest form. We create tech, tech turns on us, boom, end of the world. At least, that's the way Charlie Brooker sees it. Oh yeah, and thanks Charlie, you've now ruined dogs for us. So which Black Mirror episode gave you an existential crisis? Are there any big hitters we missed out? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Binger for more awesome videos like this. See you next time.